y'all, what's up? My name is Avery, and today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I read in June. <laughs> There are 31 books on this list that I'm talking about today. I didn't read all 31. Uh, I think I DNF'd two or three. Um, DNF means do not finish if you didn't know. There's a lot on this list. I read a lot of short books this month and I got back into my love for Kindle Unlimited. I read a lot of Kindle Unlimited books this month. First, we're going to be talking about the books that I didn't finish, obviously. First one is Wild by Elsa Day. This is a motorcycle club romance. I believe I got 20 minutes into the audiobook and I was like, no thank you, ma'am, and turned it off. I believe it's because this woman gets like saved from her car off the side of the road by this guy on a motorcycle. Turns out that was her old childhood crush and it just was not for me, was not good. Um, the writing was not great. So I didn't finish it because I knew I wasn't gonna like it. Next book is Birthday Cake by Minx Malone and I got this one up for free. It was a freebie that I had. This is a very short novella. This has plus size rep in it, but I honestly don't know if it's done well. I feel like authors, when they write a plus size main character, they need to make like all of their thoughts about food, which like makes me so mad because that's not true. And like that happened in here, um, in like the first couple of seconds. So not, not my, not my thing. Um, it was like a best friend's sister thing. It's like her birthday and he's her brother's best friend and it's forbidden, but yeah, I was like one chapter and was like, no, thank you. I don't like this. I'm probably gonna hate it. So didn't finish it. Next, I have three books that I ended up not rating. <laughs> I've started to realize it's okay to not rate books. Like it's okay. First one is Primal Possessions by Tabitha Black. And this is the first book of the Alphas of Sander series. I don't remember anything about this. I don't recommend this one. I don't think I got it off of Kindle Unlimited. This girl is born in Omega, but when you are like, I think like 18, you have to be sent to like the Omega facility. But her parents ended up not sending her there. They wanted to keep her safe because when you go to the Omega facility, Alphas can come by and basically purchase whoever their mate is. Basically the king comes and purchases her. She's out one day and the, the guards end up catching her, put her in the facility and he ends up picking her out. Says that she's his mate. He's like the successor to the king and the king is like this mad king. He's like crazy. There's trigger warnings for sexual assault, attempted sexual assault. Next I have Dangerous by Nora Ash. This is a like soft mafia book I want to say. The mafia is not really talked about in here all that much. So when Mira was a kid she was very much into the mafia world because that was what her family was into. When she was 18, she decided to escape her family and leave the mafia world because she didn't want to be a part of it anymore. Becomes a therapist, lives on with her life, thinks that her family does not know where she is. And then the book starts out with her at her first therapy session with Blaine, who was her new client. He just happens to be horrible to her and like not very nice to her. And so she kind of like kicks him out because he's not being appropriate towards her. Turns out later that Blaine is also part of the mafia world and Mira's dad wants to be in the good graces of Blaine's dad. So they set up an arranged marriage between Blaine and Mira without knowing that's who they're marrying. Mira's dad goes and finds her and makes her marry this man. I didn't know what to think of it. I didn't rate it. Maybe you'll like it. I don't know. It has tropes in it. People don't like at all. So I don't know if I'd recommend this one. Next, I have a Beauty and the Beast retelling. We have Beauty's Beast by Lee Savino and Stacia Black. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's a dark romance. Also, it ends on a cliffhanger, just so you know. So it's like not really a romance. It's like a, not even a happy for now. I didn't know that going in. I was so mad when the end came. So I'm gonna tell y'all now, it ends on a cliffhanger. So this woman, she is like a scientist. She's trying to come up with the cure to the disease that killed her mother and her father like runs the facility that she is using to figure out the cure. Her father is sick and this man one night tells her that the only way to settle your father's debt with me is to live with me and be mine. She decides to go fulfill her father's debt and go live with him because she loves her father very much. So she goes to live with this man. It's like an age gap romance as well and he always wears a mask because he has scars all over his face. Do with that book what you will. I didn't rate it. Next we have my only one star book. We have A Given to the Mob by Autumn Rain, the first book in the Rossi Brothers series. I think I had this for free off of Amazon and this is a little novella. I don't remember what this is about. It is a mob 
mafia steamy alpha male insta love story that's what the summary says i don't remember anything i am pretty sure i hated it i gave it one star next we have my two stars the first one is woodsman by ren williams this i got off of uh, audible escape i'm pretty sure it's like a three hour audiobook maybe so on sky's 21st birthday she ends up seeing guy in an alley she walks into like holding up a gun to a man and ends up doing it with him in the alley as her first time like <laughs> it's not good it's not good this takes place a couple years later she hasn't been with anyone since because she was so drawn to this man and it turns out he pops up one day in her little itty bitty small town and they end up just coming back together again and he's like a hitman i think <laughs> i don't know this book was not it <laughs> next we have his human slave by renee rose the first book in the zandian masters series I, at first didn't rate this book but then off of further reflection i realized i didn't like it so uh gave it two stars this is an alien romance book where it's our main character named lamira and she is our main character xander's mate his like um advisors want him to have a child to make sure there's an heir to the throne and all that stuff so they go and search out the woman who has the best dna compatibility with him to make the best offspring so it just so happens to be lamira he kind of like abuses her and <laughs> keeps her in a cage in his room all the time and she may also have like psychic abilities like it's it's so weird what what is it with these books like i don't understand i didn't like this gave it two stars next we're on to our 2.5 star ratings we have another alien romance book there are a lot of duds with alien romances i'm trying to find like the gems but you have to go through a lot of duds to get the gems this unfortunately wasn't a gem for me and this is the commander's captive by miranda bridges the first book in the house of kimar series and i got this one off of kento unlimited this woman and her roommate are taken from their college dorm room and put on a spaceship out of their galaxy and are told that they're in the breeding program for this alien race that look like elves because they're running low on the population and they need women to procreate and they don't have a lot of women so um they're in this breeding program and this woman her mate is like the commander of the ship it wasn't really that good wasn't really memorable next we have dark alpha's claim by donna grant i got this one off of libby this is the first book in the reapers series this one is just very 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 short so there are these reapers and they are responsible for who gets sent to death but these reapers are not allowed to be in their own romantic relationships it will complicate their job and what they're tasked to do by death but one day they get tasked by death to kill kind of like the half fae half human people even though they pose no threat and so one of the reapers is really upset by this and he doesn't want to do that because they're innocent while he's like upset about this he ends up meeting a half human half fae and he realizes that she's his mate, even though they're not supposed to be together because death has killed other reapers who have been in relationships romantically. So there you go. Um, it's very short, not very memorable. I don't think I'm going to continue with the series. It was so insta lovey, like so insta lovey. It wasn't my cup of tea, unfortunately. Next, we're going to be talking about my three star reads. First, we have Touching Divinity by Benjamin Madrano. This is actually a man writing romance, which was pretty cool. So this is just a very short like novella. It's kind of like a fantasy romance. I believe I got this for free off of Amazon. So this romance is between Cyan and Kalai. I'll read you the tagline because I'm pretty sure that sums it up. Cyan has dreamed of attaining the Dark Queen Kalai's hand for most of her life. Kalai is a mystery and she holds many secrets, some of which involve Cyan herself. It was very interesting i only gave it three stars because it would have been so much better if it was a full-blown book but it was only like 40 something pages and i feel like if it was a full-blown book it would be so amazing but um it wasn't so there wasn't really the development that i wanted from the characters or the story or the plot but it was a cool female female like fantasy romance which I haven't read a lot of those and the cover was beautiful and I love the way that they use tattoos on their body. It was very interesting. I really recommend it. It was pretty cool, but I just, I really wanted more out of this story, unfortunately. My other three star read is To Happen to Hoax by Martha Waters. This is our Lily Ladies live show pick for the month of May, but we had our live show at the beginning of June.
June, so that's when I read it. Um, this is a historical romance book where this couple was married pretty young and they were in love, but after a year, they just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And then a big fight happened to where they stopped talking to each other for four years, which was pretty excessive to me. And then one day our main character woman gets news by one of her husband's friends that he has been seriously injured and that she should come to his bedside. But then when she gets there, he's perfectly fine. And she's like, you played a horrible mean trick on me. It's my turn. And so um, I thought this was gonna be a historical romance where they play mean tricks on each other, but it's just like one giant trick that just gets dragged out the whole book that kind of made me pretty upset because <laughs> it wasn't interesting at all. <laughs> um, I was pretty bored throughout this book. Like I probably would have DNF'd it if I didn't have to read it for the book club. Um, if you want to know more thoughts about it and Ashley and Jen's thoughts, I will link our live show down below where we discuss this at length. <laughs> it's shout out time. Let's see who we're going to shout out today. We're going to be shouting out this one. Let's see who this is. This is, oh my goodness, it is Tasha from Book Diva. I absolutely love her. She reads so much romance. She loves the Ice Queen Barbarian series now <laughs> and she ended up loving it, which is so amazing. She reads like also like motorcycle club romances. I need to get some more recs from her because I don't read a lot. I need to read more. I really love her recommendations. I love her content and I just love all the romance books that she reads and I just love her as a person. She's so sweet and so nice and so very supportive. So please go check out Tasha if you haven't. Next, I only have one 3.5 stars. <laughs> so this is the prequel book to The Hunger Games all about President Snow. It was not my favorite thing unfortunately. Um, I started started out physically reading this, could not get through it. For like three weeks, I had only gotten like this way through the book. Like four weeks, I didn't want to read it. So I ended up using an audible credit and reading the book through that. The narrator was great. I really liked him, but the story was just so hard for me to get into. I really liked the like extra little tidbits we got about the Hunger Games world. I loved that. Little things we learned about the origins of the Hunger Games and how it was back then to how it is now. And like, that was really cool. I didn't really think like it was needed though, in all honesty. Um, this is obviously his origin story of him being like a villain. It wasn't an origin story that I learned like basically anything from. Like he already started out at this book as being a horrible person and he's still a horrible person at the end. Whereas like, for example, like the Lunar Chronicles with Queen Lavana, like you see her become evil. Like he was already evil to begin with. He was a piece of crap. I was also just very disappointed by um, our main character, female, Lucy Gray. I was just disappointed in like how Suzanne like treated her character towards the end because I feel like she would have like, could have been made to like to do amazing, great, like plot twisty things that Suzanne didn't do anything with. <laughs> Suzanne Collins knows what she's doing. She's writing. I really, I appreciate her and I know what she's, I know she's doing what she's doing and I know she's great. But like, I feel like it was just a missed opportunity with what things Lucy Gray could do. I really did love her. I loved the Covey. I loved how amazing she was, but I felt like it was just a missed opportunity. Anyways, I digress about this book. I'm having a live show with these ladies in the Hunger Games read along tomorrow to discuss it. That's gonna be already up for y'all. So I'm gonna link it down below. So I can't wait to discuss it with them. Next, we have my only 3.75 stars. We have The King's Horrible Bride by Katie Wilde. This is the second book in the Royal Wedding series. This is a series written by different authors. I only read books one and two. I wasn't interested in the other two. Book one will come later on in the video. This is a romance book dealing with the king of a made up country and um, the reason why he is so successful at being king is because a scientist that lives in his country, his very small country, this man who lives in his country made this very important scientific discovery and gave him like the money for it. And like the only way I want to be paid for by giving you all this money and giving you this kindness and make sure our country prospers is to for you to take care of my daughter and for her to be queen. And he's like, cool up for it. This is years later after this woman's dad has died. Maximilian, the king, decides to finally um, fulfill his vow to her dad and make her the queen, even though she thinks that she doesn't deserve to be queen. And this was actually pretty good. I really enjoyed this. I really loved the dynamic and I loved how much he showed her that he wanted her. I love when men do that. They, they show you just how much they want you in like a very respectful way, not 
not in a demanding way, like in a respectful way. I really do enjoy this and I can't wait to read more Katie Wilde's books. Next, we're on to my four star reads. First, we're gonna talk about my first read from the month. We have Muffin Top by Avery Flynn. This is the second book in the Hardigan series. I still have to go back and read the first book, but I got this one off of Audible Escape. And this is a romance book with plus size representation in it. So this woman, she is going to her high school reunion and she needs a date because everyone made fun of her in high school because of her weight and she wants to like show them up. And so one of her recent friends, um, who is a sexy fireman um, named Frankie, decides to be her plus one and to be her fake boyfriend. Go with her on this road trip to her hometown and to live in her dad's house, who's a sex therapist and it's really funny. I really did enjoy this one. It gave it four stars and I loved the banter. I loved how he realized how amazing Amazing. our main character heroine is and just like I, I love the development because it's like a friends to lovers because they both agree to fake date because they know that they're not attracted to each other but then after spending time with each other they realize that they are attracted to each other because they got to know the other person also the steamy scenes were it's so much so <laughs> next i read a bitter rival by jay sterling i got this one off of audible escape this is kind of like a romeo and juliet-esque contemporary story so our two main characters both live on their family's winery ranch and they both work for the company so they're rivals um their companies their family company their rivals that both have their own wine vineyards and they both produce wine and they grew up hating each other even though James never actually hated our main character woman he secretly loved her like his whole life and she's actually secretly loved him too but her dad has basically said if you get with this man you're disowned I'm never going to give you anything and she has put so much heart and soul into this company that she loves and making these blends and wines and he finally tells her how he feels and she has to deal with whether or not she should follow her heart or follow her career it was so much fun it was such a short audiobook that I really did enjoy and I really recommend this one next I read the midwinter mail order bride by Katie Wilde this is the first book in the Deadland series and this is a fantasy romance book. Princess Anya of Ivermore decides to go and offer herself up as a bride to Kale the Conqueror, who is our barbarian warlord who just like won his crown by killing like the evil king that lived in this land. Princess Anya is from a different land. He realizes that no one's ever gonna love him because of his barbarian ways and how not attractive he is. So he's like, you're not actually here to love me you're here to get my crown she's like no um but he doesn't believe her and so he decides to go take her back to her land that she's in and so it's like a road trip esque book but they're on horses so it's not like a in a car <laughs> on the trip back to bringing her back to her land he may or may not end up falling for her and she may or may not end up falling for him and i actually really enjoyed this it's a very 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 short fantasy romance book that i was like swooning over this whole time and was so excited when they finally got together i definitely recommend this one if you're into fantasy romance books then we have when you're ready by jl berg this is a single parent romance where a main character named claire is a widow she's left alone to raise her young daughter and the beginning of the book starts out with claire having to take her daughter to the er because her daughter keeps throwing up and she doesn't know how to fix her there she meets the on call doctor named logan and they end up sparking up a relationship together it was so sweet this is jailberg's first book and i feel like she just gets better as she writes i need to read more of her backlist but i loved this and i thought this was a great single parent romance i didn't really like the conflict in this book i couldn't give it five stars because conflict in here like really kind of grinding my gears but um, it worked itself out, but I didn't, I just didn't like the conflict in here. But I really did enjoy this one and I really recommend. I believe the audiobook is on Audible Escape. Then I reread Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren. I got the audiobook off of Libby and this is a workplace romance. This man is like the boss and he's attracted to his intern and they have a hate to love romance. And this is super duper duper steamy. And this is probably Christina Lauren's steamiest books and i have only read this book in book two so i really wanted to read these to continue on with the series because it's a companion series but i still wanted to read the first books again just so i could remember what was going on but i did really enjoy this reread four stars i don't know why i just love this series even though some people give it so much hate because it's so steamy but like some books just have a high steam level to them um and i really did 
enjoy my time reading this. It was just fun. Next, we're going to be talking about our 4.5 out of 5 stars. First, we have The Air He Breathes by Brittany C. Cherry. I got this one off of Audible Escape, and this is the first book in the Elements series. You don't need to read these books in order at all. I read book four last year, and they don't correlate with each other, like, at all. So this is another single-parent romance book. It also deals a lot with grief, a lot with death of a significant other. Um, so if that triggers you, I do not recommend reading this book because that is very prevalent in here. So our main character, woman, she just lost her husband a year ago. And in the past year, she has stayed at her mother's house with her daughter um, because she didn't want to live in that house anymore. But after a year, she decides, you know what, it's time I'm ready to go back home. And so she moves back into her house and she has a new neighbor when she moves back in and his name is Tristan Cole. And turns out he's the new town bully. <laughs> they do not get along because he doesn't want to be friends with anyone because he lost his son and his wife recently. So he's had his own grief to deal with and that he's still going with and the only way that he knows how to deal with it is by taking his anger out on other people. Even though in actuality he's a huge softy, he just doesn't know how to express his emotions. This was such a deep emotional read. I really love this. I love Brittany C. Cherry and I can't wait to read more in the Elements series. Next we have a Ruby Dixon book. We have The King's Spinster Bride. This is the first book in the Katie Wilde series that I talked about earlier, um, about the one about brides. This one is a fantasy romance book which is very different for Ruby Dixon because most of the time it's just sci-fi, but this one is just a fantasy one. So this is about Princess Hala, and 16 years ago, she saved the life of an eight-year-old barbarian boy, and she ended up watching her kingdom fall to ruin all in the same day. Now she's forgotten and a spinster and lives in a quiet temple, living her days in solitude. The last of her line, she exists in the hope that she will be forgotten. For to be remembered by the enemy is to be certain of death. And one person has not forgotten her name, Mathior, who is now 24, who was the eight-year-old that she saved, is a fierce warrior, king of the Cyclops. He is now the king of Yashrim. He wants Hala as his bride. So it's an age gap romance where the woman is older, and it's a fantasy romance, it's a royalty romance, it's short, it's cute, it's steamy. Since he's a barbarian, they have like different customs for marriage. Wow the customs they have to go through. Wow. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. Oh, if you love Ruby Dixon, you're gonna love this so much. If you love fantasy romance, you're gonna love this so much. I loved it. I need other people to read it because I feel like no one has read this book but me. The last 4.5 star that I'm going to be talking about is Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. This is a mafia romance book. Our main character, man, his wife just died, but he is now the single father to like a two-year-old boy and a six-month-old daughter. In this mafia world, you always need a wife to take care of your kids. And so his advisors and his parents are having him get married so that he could have a mother to his children and he's like in his early 30s and she is 18 and she gets put in this arranged marriage so um this is an age gap romance it was so good because he is so abrasive and standoffish because he doesn't want to be in a relationship actually at all because he doesn't want to be hurt because he's been hurt in the past and so he keeps our main character woman at a distance even though she is trying so hard to be a mother to these kids and just provide a life for these kids and she really gets to know them and really helps them and it is so cute i love kids so if you love kids i definitely recommend reading this one it's a little dark and twisted because there's mafia aspects in here and there is just a hate to love in here um, because he just hates everyone so but I really recommend this one and I really did love it. Lastly, we're going to talk about the three books that I gave five stars to in the month of June. So I decided to continue on with Talia Hibbert's Ravenwood series. I believe I read book one like last year and I really enjoyed it. So the second one is called Untouchable and this is a nanny romance and it's a childhood crush. So our two main characters had crushes on each other when they were kids, but he ended up moving away and getting married and having two kids. He moves back to town to help take care of his mom who possibly has cancer and he really needs a nanny and there he sees Hannah again and she just happens to be a nanny and is looking for a job. So she becomes their nanny and it's a nanny romance and it was so sweet. I believe she is bisexual so there's that representation in there. She's just so snarky and it's so cute and like ugh, I love it 
so much. I love this series so very much. So then the other book that I gave five stars to is the third book in the series, which is That Kind of Guy. And I loved this one as well. This is an age gap romance where the woman is older in this relationship and our main character man is demisexual. Um, so there's that representation in there as well. And it's like a fake relationship. She is a writer and she's going to like writer expo where her ex-husband will be. And so our friend Zach, who's like around like 15 years younger than her, um, decides to be her fake date. They start developing feelings for each other and a romantic relationship through fake dating and it was so good. Our main character woman has my chronic illness which I had no idea going into this book. I really enjoyed it. Um, I do think that there could have been a little bit more regarding my chronic illness in here because it's just like addressed which I feel like there's more to it than what was expressed in the book. What's written in the book is accurate but I feel like there's more to it than just what was written. Um, I really did enjoy it though and I gave it five stars. I really loved it and I need to reread it and get my own copy because I'm so happy that a book like has my chronic illness representation in it. It was so good. There's also a Great Dane in this book. I'm pretty sure he's Great Dane and he is so cute and sweet and I love him. I love this series so much. I love Charlie Hibbert. I need y'all to go read this series. And the last book that I gave five stars to is Beach Read by Emily Henry, of course. This is our lovely ladies left to pick for the month of June. Um, be sure to join us on June 11th to discuss this one with us. I loved this so much. This is a romance book between two writers and they end up living in beach houses next door to each other and they're both in writing slumps and so they task each other to write the other's genre and they actually already knew each other back in college. They went to the same college together, we're in the same program. It's so good. It deals a lot with death of a parent, grief, struggling to like just come into who you are and it is so beautiful, so amazing. I loved January in this. I loved Gus. I loved their relationship. This whole book was flawless. I loved it so very much. So there you have it. Those are the very many books that I read in the month of June. My voice hurts from talking so much. But anyways, uh, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. Thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye!